Today we're taking a first look at this gorgeous Sharon Cycles DG. A little over a year ago, Will Sharon reached out to me and said, hey, I, I noticed you're starting to feature smaller builders. I would love to be featured. This is his creation, the DG. It stands for decomposed granite. That's the type of soil he rides at in Ashland, Oregon. There's some really, really cool things going on here. It's super slack, by far the slackest bike I've had in for review. It's super boost, uh, 157 super boost spacing in the rear. It's hand brazed and rather than filing all his fillet brazes to make them look absolutely smooth and perfect, he's kind of taking the raw creator's approach to show the flaws and the organic nature of it. And I appreciate that. There's a place for totally polished works of art that are totally perfect but I like kind of the rock and roll style of it not looking absolutely perfect. And in no means do imperfect looking fillet braises mean there's low quality. He just chooses not to spend a lot of time filing those, which ultimately can weaken the joint as well. This thing's made out of steel. It's got this awesome coral pink to turquoise fade. Really, really beautifully built bike. This bike's geo is very progressive. When talking with Will, he said this bike has two purposes, one to go up and two to go down. It's not meant to do flat kind of XC rolling trail stuff. It's meant to shred down, at, but still be a good climber. Let's get this thing built up and see what makes it so special. For this build, we're featuring Astral wheels with White Industries hubs. These are hand built in the US. I haven't run these yet. I'm excited to try them. They're a 32i, so a little bit wider rim than a lot of people are going with. I like wider rims, especially on a hardtail. Let's you run a little bit lower pressure without the sidewall squirming. So once again, this is a super boost frame, which means it's not boost, it's bigger. It's a 157 millimeter spacing in the dropout, not a 148, which is what most bikes are. So unfortunately, I can't uh, compare this with all my different wheel sets. So I'm not gonna know exactly how soft this rides because some of it could be the wheel. I'll still get a pretty good feel though. Here she is all built up. This came in at 31.6 pounds because I'm running some heavy stuff. We're running a downhill DHR in the rear. Um, we're running an Asagai XO plus up front. We're running this heavy RockShox reverb dropper, um, heavy mallet DH cranks, and that all adds up. I don't know how much the frame weighs because it came with cranks and I wasn't gonna strip the cranks off and pull the bottom bracket just to weigh it. So you'll have to reach out to Sharon to know what the frame weight is. But I built this up burly, 150 mil helm up front. That's what this bike spec for, a 140 to 150 mil. This thing is meant to charge. This is the slackest bike I've ever seen and the slackest bike I've ever had in on the channel. We're gonna measure it in just a minute, but I wanna talk about this beautiful frame. This sloping top tube has such an elegant design. It reminds me a lot of a Sklar. The sclar, the slope of the top tube kind of matches the chain stays. I think uh, you can see that these are in a little bit different angle, so it doesn't quite look like a sclar. It's got its own look, but I think it's beautiful. You've got to be careful with these sloped top tubes that your levers don't gouge the top. Right now they don't, and it's really interesting. The head angle's so slack that it brings the bars lower. So they're not rubbing, but they're close. If you didn't run this, if I didn't run this many spacers, it'd probably rub. So that's something to think about with kind of humped top tubes like that. Really beautiful oval tubing. I like seeing the handcrafted nature of it, that the human was behind it and that it's not absolutely perfect. There are a couple interesting things here. With the rear brake, it was tight with a 180. It's fitting, but it's tight in there, the way the brake runs on these dropouts. So all the cable routing goes under the down tube. It's all external, which I love. If you run a lot of shuttles and, and um, run this on the back of a tailgate, I don't love that. It kind of messes up your cables after a while. That's a small thing to think about. Also, your lines need to be a little bit longer, like your brake lines um, travel a longer path when they go down here than when they just follow the top tube. So if you're reusing parts from another bike, you might need to buy new brake hoses if your routing's a little bit different. That's not unique to this bike, but it's something to mention. I'm running wireless dropper and wireless shifter, so you're not seeing shifter cables or dropper cables. The dropper cable inserts in this nice little port down here right above the bottom bracket. The derailleur cable runs on top of the chain stays. 
That means your housing ends up acting as your chain protector. That's good and bad. I mean, it's up to you. After a while, it will beat the housing up and you'll have to swap the housing out. Not the end of the world. Kind of one way to kill two birds with one stone. But since I'm running wireless, I don't have anything. So I just tape this up, this little um, cable guide. That's going to take all the abuse from the chain. Really sleek looking bike. I love the small tubes, just the shapes. It just has a very organic feel to it. It feels hand-built. It feels handcrafted. Will's been building frames for a while now, but he really ramped up production during the pandemic. We're seeing a lot of these small builders that during the pandemic, when there were bike shortages and people had more time to hone their craft and work on their hobbies, we've seen a lot of small builders. And that's a great thing because there's so many great builders out there doing wild stuff. The geometry on this is wild. I don't want to dive too deep into the theory of geometry in this video, but the slacker your bike, the more that front wheel is out in front of you, the harder it is to weight it on flat terrain. And the fork can actually bind if this terrain's not steep enough to accept those stanchions moving in the right direction. So I know a lot of people just think, oh, I'm hardcore. I need an even slacker bike. Slacker is better. It depends on where you ride. And that's a big part of my bike consultation service. I've got personal hardtails that range from 67, 66, 65, 64, and 63 degree head angles that I ride in different places. And when I'm going to a certain place, I pick the bike with a head angle to match that. When it's flatter stuff, I don't like my slack bikes. The fork doesn't work as well and they don't steer as well. So I need a steeper head angle. When it's steep, real steep, Something like this gives you a lot of confidence. That wheel's way in front of you. You don't want to pitch over the front as much. The fork can move in the right angle in the right direction. So, like we said at the beginning, this bike was meant to climb and descend and not do anything in between. It's not a trail bike. It's not really meant for like flowy, mellow greens and blues. This thing's meant for shredding. So we're going to take it on some trails that are a little bit steeper, a little bit faster than what I normally run to see if this thing comes alive. The cool thing with small builders is how willing they are to think outside the box. Will has really thought outside the box with this geometry. It's a forward shifted geometry where you ride a little bit more on top of the bars, more modern riding position, get over the front. So it's got a short rear end, longish front end, and a real slack head angle to put that front wheel way out there in front of you. Let's get this thing on the geometer and see what the actual geo measurements look like. Man, this is one of the most beautiful bikes I've had in for a while. Just the brass head badge, the shape, the color, there's just something special about it. I love these dropouts. It's just a work of art. Well done, Will. Rear center, 425 on the money. Reach is 435. Ooh, that's a little bit compact reach. I'm actually gonna like that when it's this slack. When it's this slack, I need a little bit more room to get over the front. And when it's too stretched out and slack, it's really hard to get over the front. So I'm actually glad this isn't longer. Front center is gonna be huge. 795 wheelbase. I have to extend my ruler. 1220, that is a long wheelbase. And we got a short rear end. So this slack head angle with a 150 fork really kicks that front end out. It's way ahead of you. That's gonna have a lot of stability at speed. And it's going to be almost impossible to go over the bars on something this slack. This is slacker than downhill race bikes. Pretty wild. Now, it is a hardtail. So as it goes through its travel, it gets steeper, unlike a downhill full suspension bike. But still, it's worth noting just how slack this thing is. That doesn't mean it's bad, though. And sometimes we fixate too much on one number. Head angle, people understand pretty well. People have kind of locked into that, which is a good thing. People are learning more. But reach... Effective top tube, seat tube angle, chain stay length all play into that as well. So we can't make a ton of assumptions just off that 61.6 .6 degree head angle. Bottom bracket drop is 56 millimeters. So not super low, not super high. I'm betting this is still going to be playful, especially with that super short rear end. This is going to be fun because this Geo is quite different. I know a lot of people will say, oh, that looks just like Bike X. It's only a centimeter off here and there. Centimeter makes a big difference in a couple different places. So if it was a little bit lower, it'd probably feel a little bit like that Radical Owl Mountain, but with a little bit higher one, it should be pretty playful and want to dance on the rear wheel a little bit. Stack is coming in at 635. Now, normally a 150 fork would give you a tall stack, but when it's kicked out that much, you lose some of the, the vertical height that a 150 fork provides. 
So you could run this as a 140, get you a little bit lower bottom bracket, a little bit steeper head angle, a little bit steeper seat angle. Some people might want to do that, but I wanted to ride it how it was designed for. Let's check some angles. <laughs> 61.3. Now remember, at the stanchions, it's like half a degree slacker than the actual head angle. My goodness, 61.3. So like I said, if we're riding it flat terrain, for this to move up, it's going to have a lot of friction on the bushings. It's not going to want to move up or easily. But when you rotate it down, it's going to absorb those really well. So once again, you need the right terrain for a bike like this. Let's take a look at the seat angle. 76.5 degrees effective seat angle. I'm going to like that. Very cool. So it's not just a sled. It's not like the Marin Elroy or not like the Rocky Mountain Growler with a super long rear end, super slack front end that's just going to be a beast to handle. I've got some theories about how this is going to handle, but we're going to have to see when we take it out on the trail to see what it really rides like. This is a very modern hardtail. Will takes a very different approach than the cookie cutter kind of same old 67 degree head angle, 430 chain stays, 450 mil reach. He's put a lot of thought into every element of this bike. Now, Will's a small builder, and he's building these one at a time by hand. And the DG is a semi-custom bike. Certain geometry measurements on this bike are fixed, but other geometry measurements like contact points and reach and all those different things to make it fit you are fluid. So he will take your measurements and you'll send those into him and he will stretch and shrink and warp this bike to make it fit you, but still ride like a DG. The ordering process was wonderful. I gave him all of my measurements. It was very straightforward. He was very kind. And I think that's a good approach because people that go full custom on bikes, a lot of my clients on Patreon don't know exactly the geo measurements they want. They don't know the exact reach they want and how that pairs with the exact chain stay that they want. Those that do, awesome. Find a custom builder and they'll build, you put in whatever measurements you want and they'll build it to you. But a lot of people seeking custom bikes don't have enough geometry experience riding a whole bunch of different combinations to know what works perfectly for them. So a semi-custom option like this is a great way to go. You're still going to get the same ride feel out of what I'm about to explain on my upcoming review, but it's going to fit you. And I think that's a really cool way to design these and a really cool way for a small builder to still give you that custom-ish experience without you having to make tons of decisions about geometry and tube thickness and all that sort of thing. So bravo to Will for that. The overall vibe and feel of this bike is raw and rugged meets elegant. It's a really cool combination and it doesn't come across in camera very well. I like the raw organic feel to this, but with the elegant shapes and lines of this bike. It truly is a wonderful blend of old school and new school with the geometry, the tubing shape, the steel. Will's really interested in picking more sustainable parts for his bike and reducing his carbon footprint. And so he likes steel far more than carbon, which ends up in the garbage when it's done. And steel's a reliable material. It's robust. It has great ride qualities. It's easy to work with. So that's why he chooses steel. He's also got a gravel bike that's equally progressive like this. It's meant to ride like a rowdy slack hardtail with drop bars. So if you're interested in that, go check out his other work. I got a link in the description below to his website. It's such a pleasure to have more small builders featured on this channel. I love seeing creative minds go out and not just talk about, well, if I had a bike company, it would be like this, but actually go out and do it. Starting your own company is so hard. It feels like for every 10 people that think about starting a company, one actually does it. And so bravo to Will for coming out swinging with such a great looking product right off the bat. I'm excited to get this thing on the trail. If you need custom advice on your bikes, I do that over on Patreon. It's a service that you pay for, but you can pick my brain on all the different bikes I've ridden. And I've ridden most of the full suspensions out there too, just not on this channel. So whether you're looking for hardtail advice or full suspension advice, if you want help from an unbiased source, picking the right bike for your riding style and budget, I do that over on Patreon. I'd be happy to help you over there. That's how I support this channel. In the meantime, I love featuring stuff from small builders, from big people, all sorts of different stuff. Hardtails are my true love. I love riding hardtails and I'm super excited for this thing with all the cool things going on with it and that radical geometry. Can't wait to see what this thing rides like. Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.
Holy cow, those white industry hubs spin forever. This is my first build. Well, the first bike I've had white industries on for probably 25 years. My goodness, they roll forever. I got to find out what bearings are using in those. That is impressive. You guys are awesome. See you later.